They told us we needed to check our facts. We did. We're right. In his public testimony, Ambassador Sondland used variations of the words assume, presume, guess, speculate, and belief over 30 times. Here are some examples. That was my presumption, my personal presumption. That was my belief. That was my presumption, yeah. Is that I right? said I presume that might have to be done in order to get the aid released. It was a presumption. I've been very clear as to when I was presuming, and I was presuming on the aid. It would be pure, um, you know, guesswork on my part, speculation. I don't, I don't know. That was the problem, Mr. Goldman. No one told me directly that the aid was tied to anything. I was presuming it was. Didn't show you any of this testimony. Not once during their 21-hour presentation. 21 hours. More than 21 hours. And they couldn't give you the context to evaluate Ambassador Sondland. All the Democrats have to support the alleged link between security assistance and investigations is Ambassador Sondland's assumptions and presumptions. We remember this exchange. Is it correct? No one on this planet told you that Donald Trump was tying this aid to the investigations. Because if your answer is yes, then the chairman's wrong and the headline on CNN is wrong. No one on this planet told you that President Trump was tying aid to investigations. Yes or no? Yes. So, you really have no testimony today that ties President Trump to a scheme to withhold aid from Ukraine in exchange for these investigations? Other than my own presumption. When he was done presuming, assuming, and guessing, Ambassador Sondland finally decided to ask President Trump directly, what does the president want from Ukraine? Here's the answer. President Trump, when I asked him the open-ended question, as I testified previously, what do you want from Ukraine? His answer was, I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. Tell Zelensky to do the right thing. That's all I got from President Trump. The president was unequivocal. Ambassador Sondland stated that this was the final word he heard from the President of the United States. And once he learned this, he text messaged Ambassadors Taylor and Volcker. The President has been crystal clear, no quid pro quos of any kind. If you are skeptical of Ambassador Sondland's testimony, it was corroborated by the statement of one of your colleagues, Senator Johnson. Senator Johnson also had heard from Ambassador Sondland that the security assistance might be linked to the investigations. So on August 31, Senator Johnson asked the President directly whether there was some kind of arrangement where Ukraine would take some action and the hold would be lifted. Again, President Trump's answer was crystal clear. No way. I would never do that. Who told you that? As Senator Johnson wrote, I have accurately characterized his reaction as adamant, vehement, and angry. They didn't tell you about Senator Johnson's letter. Why not? The Democrats' entire quid pro quo theory is based on nothing more than the initial speculation of one person, Ambassador Sondland. Shorn of its rambling character and in not so many words, this is the essence of what the President communicates. We've been very good to your country, very good. No other country has done as much as we have. But you know what? I don't see much reciprocity here. I hear what you want. I have a favor I want from you, though. And I'm going to say this only seven times, so you better listen good. I want you to make up dirt on my political opponent, understand lots of it. On this and on that, I'm going to put you in touch with people, and not just any people. I'm going to put you in touch with Attorney General of the United States, my Attorney General, Bill Barr. He's got the whole weight of the American law enforcement behind him. And I'm going to put you in touch with Rudy. You're going to love him, trust me. You know what I'm asking, and so I'm only going to say this a few more times, in a few more ways. And by the way, don't call me again. I'll call you when you've done what I asked. This is, in sum and character, what the president was trying to communicate. That's fake. That's not the real call. 
That's not the evidence here. That's not the transcript that Mr. Cipollone just referenced. Think about this. The Democrats accused the president of leveraging security assistance to supposedly force President Zelensky to announce investigations. But how can that possibly be when the Ukrainians were not even aware that the security assistance was paused? There can't be a threat without the person knowing he's being threatened. There can't be a quid pro quo without the quo. Ambassador Volker testified that the Ukrainians did not know about the hold until reading about it in Politico. Ambassador Taylor and Tim Morrison both agreed. Deputy Assistant Secretary of State George Kent testified that no Ukrainian official contacted him about the paused security assistance until that first intense week in September. Let's hear from the four of them. I believe the Ukrainians became aware of the hold on August 29th and not before. That date is the first time any of them asked me about the hold by forwarding an article that had been published in Politico. It was only after August 29th, when the political argument, that I got calls from, the, from several of the Ukrainian officials. You mentioned the August 28th Politico article. Was that the first time that you believe the Ukrainians may have um, had a real sense that the aid was on hold? Yes. Mr. Kent, had you had any Ukrainian official contacting you concerned about, when was the first time a Ukrainian official contacted you concerned about potential withholding of USAID? It was after the article in Politico came out uh, in that first intense week of September. That it wasn't until the, the Politico article that... That's correct. I received a text message uh, from one of my Ukrainian counterparts on August 29th forwarding that article, and that's the first they raised it with me. The House managers didn't show you this testimony from any of these four witnesses. Why not? Why didn't they give you the context of this testimony? Earlier, Mr. Morrison testified, I was not concerned that anything illegal was discussed. Mr. Morrison further testified that there was nothing improper and nothing illegal about anything that was said on the call. In fact, Mr. Morrison repeatedly testified that he disagreed with Lieutenant Colonel Vindman's assessment that President Trump made demands of President Zelensky, or that he said anything improper at all. Here's Mr. Morrison. In that transcript, does the President not ask Zelensky to look into the Bidens? Mr. Chairman, I can only tell you what I was thinking at the time. That is not what I understood the President to be doing. Do you believe in your opinion that the President of the United States demanded the President Zelensky undertake these investigations? No, sir. And you didn't hear the President make a demand, did you? No, sir. Again, there were no demands from your perspective, Mr. Morrison. That is correct, sir. But is it fair to say that uh, as you were listening to the call, you weren't thinking, wow, the president's, uh, President is bribing the President of Ukraine? That never crossed your mind? It did not, sir. Or that he was extorting the President of the Ukraine? It did or, not, sir. Or doing anything improper? Correct, sir. Significantly, the Ukrainian government never raised any concerns about the July 25 call. The bottom line is it is not possible for the brief security assistance review to have been used as leverage when President Zelensky and the other top Ukrainian officials did not know about it. That's what you need to know. That's what the House managers didn't tell you. The House managers know how important this issue is. When we briefly mentioned it a few days ago, they told us we needed to check our facts. We did. We're right. Here is Ambassador Volker. You had a meeting with the President of the United States, and you believe that the policy issues that he raised concerning Ukraine were valid, correct? Yes. Did the President of the United States ever say to you <clears throat> that he was not going to allow aid for the United States to go to the Ukraine unless there were investigations into Burisma, the Bidens, or the 2016 elections? No, he did not. Did the Ukrainians ever tell you that they understood that they would not get a meeting with the President of the United States, a phone call with the President of the United States, military aid, or foreign aid from the United States unless they undertook investigations of Burisma, the Bidens, or the 2016 elections? No, they did not. The House managers never told you any of this. Why not? Why didn't they show you this testimony? Why didn't they tell you about this testimony? Why didn't they put Ambassador Sondland's testimony 
in its full and proper context for your consideration. Because none of this fits their narrative, and it wouldn't lead to their predetermined outcome. Thank you for your attention. I yield to